Okay, so now we have the concept of random variables. Uh, you probably want to ask why do we want to have the notion of random variables? One of the most important reason is content in this video. It's because with random variables, it's easier for us to calculate or to express some descriptive measurements about random events. For example, uh, if we are tossing a coin or tossing a dice, then you probably want to ask, um, in average, or most likely, what will I obtain? Okay? Or what's the variance? Or how may we measure the variability of these kind of random events? Then that goes back to our descriptive statistics measurements, right? We have mean, we have median, we have uh, mode, we have quantile, percentile, quartile, we have uh, MAD, we have variances. This can all be uh, calculated, or not, may not be easily calculated, but this can be calculated if we have the definition of random variables. So let's try to do this. Um, suppose I have a random variable x, and I have the simple space capital X, uh, capital S. Typically, we want to express all those possible values in a simple space or in a set with this notation. Okay, when I use a pair of curly brackets to contain something, typically I am expressing a set, and then. For this notation, that means for each i in the simple space, I have xi. Okay, so if I have five items in my simple space, then their values will be expressed as x1, x2, up to x5. Okay, anyway, this is just to say, uh, to denote all the elements in my simple space. And also, for each random variable, I have a probability mass function, right? I have that probability function. It may have a formula, or it may be expressed by a table. But anyway, I know, given each realization, what's the probability? With all of them, we first define our expected value, or define our mean of a random variable as this formula. Okay, you don't need to memorize this formula, and also we will minimize the the chances for you to do hand calculations with this formula. But you need to know the concept, or you must know the concept about expected values. What's that? For each value, I want to somehow average them. Okay, for all those values, I want to somehow average them to find a simple measurement about the mean of that random variable, okay? But I want to use the probability for that value to occur as the weight, okay? If different values have different probabilities to occur, then for those, pro for those values with higher probabilities, they should get more weights in this weighted average. Okay, instead of having all of them having the same weight. So that's why we are using probabilities to give them weight uh, instead of using the single weight. So what I am saying here is that suppose I define another way to do average like this. Again, I sum up all those values in my sample space and then divide it by, uh, let's say, n. Now, n is the size of the sample space. If I do so, then I am doing a simple average instead of a weighted average, right? And I don't care about the probabilities for different values to occur. Then, this particular way, this particular definition is not very useful. It's not very useful because probability or the likelihood of each value to occur is really something we want to address. With that in mind, now variance of a random variable is very clear. 
is simply to measure the variance calculated from each outcome with using the probability as a weight. Okay, so previously, in in our previous lecture, we know what's the definition of variance is, right? For each value, I calculate the difference from that value to mean, and then square it, and then sum all of them, and then divide it by n. Previously is that, but now I want to use the probability for each value to occur as the weight, and then that's my variance. If I have variance, then I have standard deviation. It's just the square root of my variance. Okay, here you can see that I am using mu and the sigma square and the sigma to denote those mean and variance and the standard deviations. That means for, for random variables, we somehow believe they represent some kind of population data. Okay, they are closely related to population data. We will tell you why this is the case. Okay, but at this moment, simply think, random variables are something related to population. Keep this in mind. Okay, <coughs> so uh, we want to do some examples to confirm the idea to you. We start with the very uh, basic one. Is about rolling a dice again. Suppose the dice is fair, and then the probability mass function is that no matter what's the value, the probability is 1 over 6. Then, what's the expected value? Well, let's apply the function. So, the definition is that for each value, I give it the weight as its probability. So, it's 1 over 6 times 1 plus 1 over 6 times 2 and so on and so on, until 1 over 6 times 6. What does that mean? That means the total average, the average is just 3.5. Okay. So doing this simple calculation tells us what's the probability, uh, sorry, what's the expected value of tossing a dice. That's 3.5. About variance, we may do the simple calculation again. For each value, I find the difference between it and the 3.5. For example, for 1, it's negative 2.5. I square it, and then I give it the weight according to its probability. It's 1 over 6. And then I add everything together. I add everything together. And then I get roughly 2.92 as the variance of x. Okay? For standard deviation, well... It's just taking a square root. So this helps us to um, apply, to understand how to apply this equation. Let's compare this example with the next example to get more intuitions or to get more physical meanings about expected values and variances. Suppose I have an unfair dice. For this unfair dice, 1, 2, and 3 may occur, each with probability 0 0.2. And then 4 and 5 has probability 0 0.15. For 6, it's just 0 0.1. Okay? For fair dice, the probability is 1 over 6 for each value, and it's around 0 0.167. So you can see, 1, 2, 3, the probability is above average, and 4, 5, 6 is below average. Okay? So it's more likely for 1, 2, 3 to occur, for small values to occur. Okay, it's more likely for small values to occur. Now let's calculate the expected value again. For 1, the weight is 0 0.2, its probability. For 2, the same thing. For 3, the same thing. For 4, the, probi the probability for 4 to occur is 0 0.15, and it's the weight of 4, and then 5, and then 6. Okay, if I complete this calculation, I will get 3.15. Immediately, you can see this new expected value is less than the expected value for rolling a fair dice. And that's reasonable, right? Because 
smaller values has higher probabilities to occur. Naturally, your expectation about the outcome of rolling a dice will become smaller, because these small values is going to drive down the expected values. Okay, so that's why in expectation you will get smaller amount. So if some guy is asking you and say, um, "Let's play a game." For each time you roll a dice, I give you X dollars if you see X as the outcome. But to play each game, you need to pay me three point two dollars. Okay, you need to pay me three point two dollars. If you know that's a fair dice, you will play the game. Uh, you may play the game because it's the expectation is higher than 3.2. But if you have this unfair dice, you probably do not want to play this game because in expectation you will lose some money. Okay, that's the difference. How about the variance? The expected value we know is 3.15. So we may follow this formula again to calculate the variance for one for the first value one the difference between one and the mean <coughs> is now 2.15 and then we square it and then this value is multiplied by 0 0.2 the weight and then we do the same thing for all the six values we get some numbers around 2.6 so the variance is also becoming smaller when we have a fair dice is 2.9. When we have this unfair dice, we have 2.6. Why? Probably you found the answer. The answer is that with more probability, with a higher probability, we see small values. Okay? It doesn't matter whether it's small values or large values, but the fact is these three values has some probability that is higher than it should be. Okay, so if someone asks you to guess uh, whether the values will be 1, 2, 3, or whether the value will be 4, 5, 6, with an unfair dice, it's easier to guess, right? With an unfair dice, it's easier to predict what will be the outcome because you know small values has higher probabilities to occur. If some random events is easier to predict, then the variability must be smaller. And then it's reflected with the fact that the variance is smaller. Okay, so you probably can imagine or can understand that as long as you have an unfair dice and you know its distribution, then the variance cannot be greater than 2.92. Uh, okay? A fair dice always has the largest variance because it's the hardest to predict. Okay, so that's about concepts. In general, when you need to calculate uh, means or uh, variances, you don't want to do it by hand. Okay? So with R, you may easily do this. Suppose I have this distribution. How may I calculate the probability, uh, calculate the expected value and variance? I simply need to replicate the formula I just used with some R functions. So I first create X as a vector of all possible values, one to six. And then I create P as a vector for possible uh, for probabilities okay and then how may I find the mean of X I just need to first calculate X times P X times P will be a vector and it will contain the pairwise multiplications or pairwise product of these values so the first element will be 1 times 0 0.2. The second element will be 2, point, uh, 2 times 0 0.2.
and so on and so on. And the last element will be 6 times 0 0.1. Okay? And then all I need to do is to sum them up. I get mu of x. Once I get mu of x, and then what I should do for variance is that for each value, minus mu of x. And then for each value, do a square. And then for each value, give it a weight according to its probability. And then sum them up. That's my variance. Finally, I can use the square root function to get standard deviations. Okay? One thing that you may want to do is to try these codes by yourself before you go to the lecture. Uh, you simply need to type these five lines into your R or copy and paste, whatever. And then you can see these values as the descriptive measurements. You may modify these values a little bit to see what's going to be changed. Okay? But as long as at, at least you know, using R to calculate these means and variances is just simple. We will not require you to do this by hand. So you probably want to be familiar with this. Okay, that's the end of today's lecture. Uh, before you go to the lecture on Monday, make sure that you have went over all those um, R handouts and R examples that I put online. That's going to help you a lot for further studies. Thank you.